what should we call this? The uh, interrogation room, the dungeon. Either way, if my family wasn't in New York and there wasn't a potential market that I'd like to tap into for Frankie's free range meat, I would get as far away from this godforsaken country, let alone state, as possible. The feds must be printing so much money, they don't give half a shit about any business worth less than a billion dollars. And with everything that happened at Frankie's Free Range Meat over the past year and a half, breaking into our cars, garage door being damaged, that crazy contractor being belligerent after stealing $50,000, you know, plus a few other crazies that I didn't get on camera or talk about, I genuinely felt that I needed a gun to feel safer. Uh, so back in November of 2019, I applied for the business carry license and I was reached out to by one of the officers working in the licensing division to schedule an interview. He sent me a list of about 20 documents I needed in addition to the original documents that I filed with the application, which was probably around 10. And it took me almost two months to gather all of those documents. Uh, so it was February of 2020 when I had the actual interview. Now, I remember that whole situation down there was horrible. This was when you know what started. So in order to even get to the police headquarters in New York City, which as you can imagine is you know, pretty high profile from a security perspective, it took me about an hour of walking from my car. And you, know, you had to walk a pretty far distance because so many streets and walkways were closed, I'm assuming for those security measures. And once you were actually there, you had to wait in a line to go through the pre-screening security for the building. You know, they put you through the magnetic detectors, looking for stuff, patting you down. You have to empty out all your pockets. Once I was physically in the building, I had to wait another hour or so to even speak to an officer. And normally I don't mind stuff like this, but when every step of the process is made out to be a nightmare and you don't even expect to get you know, the carry, it just accumulates to the point of discouragement. You just get so frustrated that you don't really care anymore and would rather be doing anything else than participating in this nonsense system. So at that first interview, the officer basically explained to me that I didn't have enough cash withdrawals or transport of valuable materials to warrant a carry business license. He said I could apply for a premises license and although I didn't really want it at that point, I decided to move forward. The carry business license allows you to bring your gun with you to your residence while you're driving back to work. And the reason I wanted that was because, you know, the main security caution I had was walking out to my car, being outside the business where I felt the least safe. You know, with the premises license, the gun has to stay secured inside the business. And if I couldn't have the gun when I was walking out to my car, into the business, I didn't really see that much of a point. You know, because when was something going to happen? I'd have to get out of my car, go into the business, get the gun, and then I have it when I'm inside, which to me is not that big of a deal. Thing is, I shelled out $600 for the permit application. That's the filing fee. Uh, so I figured I might as well follow through with the premises carry. So after that first interview, he needed seven more documents and all of these needed to be notarized. Uh, you had to get your family or people in your community to vouch for you, which is very difficult to do as the weenies in New York want nothing to do with the gun. You know, for some reason, my family and relatives uh, think it's safer for me not to have a gun when I'm in this. <laughs> don't, don't get me started on that. Basically, no help whatsoever. Uh, the Toyota Corolla delayed a lot of stuff on my end mostly. You know, these guys at the headquarters really want to push these applications through, I'm guessing, so they can just decline them. Uh, you know, we are relocating Frankie's Free Range Meat to the new facility, and I needed the documents and the paperwork to be in the address of the new facility, so I had to wait until we had, you know, first month's rent, first utility bills, all that stuff. And at that initial interview, I was also fingerprinted, but for some reason they had to redo it and reschedule the fingerprinting a second time. So I went back to submit the remainder of my documents and get the second fingerprinting done, which involved me getting lost down there because they changed the street orientation again. I had to walk around. It was completely ridiculous. So I don't know. Now it's probably around July or August and they reached out to me stating some inconsistencies with the paperwork, which they were a little bit unclear about. Uh, so I went back down to submit the corrections of the documents and there was still a problem with the paperwork. 
at this point, I kind of just gave up. I didn't really want the premises carry license anyway, and I was tired of asking my grandmother and parents to get notarized documents for me. Uh, the problem was that my late grandfather was still on the utility bill, and they wanted my grandma to write a letter explaining you know, why my name or her name was not on the bill. And then I received uh, the disapproval letter in the mail. Now I ripped this, but it says City of New York Licensing Division. Uh, date September 15, 2020, Mr. Tofano Frank, Frankie Syringe Meat LLC. Notice of disapproval. Uh, your application for a carry business handgun license is disapproved as per Title 38 of the rules of the City of New York. Uh, basically, they said that I didn't prove or document any recurrent threats to my life or safety, and that I also couldn't prove that I was handling enough cash uh, you know, to justify the business carry license. And then they say, oh, well, we suggested the premise business license, but it didn't work out. And they say, to appeal this decision, the applicant must submit a notarized statement setting forth the grounds for the appeal. Uh, basically, you can appeal this if you'd like to uh, by direction of inspector, da, 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 commanding officer. So it's whatever. I wasn't going to, you know, do all that stuff again. And then I still have to pay for the gun. I have to pay for training, probably another thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. Um, I wasn't really sure if we were going to relocate the business, but the thing is, you relocate the business somewhere safe, you don't even need a gun. Uh, that's the thing. The cities and the locations where it's not safe to live, they make it basically impossible to get a gun, and the places where you don't have to worry about it, where everyone has a gun, you know, nothing happens uh, for the most part. I guess let me know if you guys have any experience with this type of stuff, what you think. Uh, but outside of that, thank you guys for joining me today. Please leave a comment down below. Drop a like on the video, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And you guys can check out frank-stefano.com for all of my businesses, including Frankie's Range Meat. Uh, I'll try to do a live stream later at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, news update, and just uh, talk about what's going on in the world.